and it's it's just going to be the uh, the analogy I've used many times is um, is uh, turbojet design. Um, how how did we figure out how to make turbojets so unbelievably reliable, right? Uh, I mean, those are like you know incredibly complex uh, pieces of hardware that run at really high temperatures for you know twenty hours twenty hours at a time sometimes, and we can you know fly halfway around the world with a two, on a two engine uh, uh, jetliner at near the speed of sound. Like how incredible is this? It's just unbelievable. And did we do this because we invented like a general principle of how to make turbojet safe? No, we. It took decades to kind of fine tune the design of those systems so that they they were safe. Is there a separate uh, group within General Electric or Snecma or whatever that is specialized in turbojet safety? No, it's the design is all about safety because a better turbojet is also a safer turbojet, so um, a more reliable one. It's the same for AI. Like, do you, do you need you know, specific provisions to make AI safe? No, you need to make better AI systems and they will be safe because they are designed to be more useful uh, and more controllable. So let's imagine a system, AI system, that's able to be incredibly convincing and can convince you of anything. I, I can at least imagine such a system. And I can see such a system be weapon-like because it can control people's minds. We're pretty gullible. We we want to believe a thing. You can have an AI system that controls it. And you could see governments using that as a weapon. So do you think if you imagine such a system, there's any parallel to something like nuclear weapons? No. So is it, why... Why, why is that technology different? So you're saying there's going to be gradual development. Yeah. There's going to be, I mean, it might be rapid, but there'll be iterative, and then we'll be able to kind of respond and, and so on. 